Many of the components used in electric vehicle batteries come from hazardous and rare sources. Wouldn't it be fantastic if the materials for EV batteries came from a farm rather than a mine? Exciting development is happening in the battery sector. Batteries made of plants and carbon are on the way. Kind of. The Toyota research team is looking into using plant-based materials to produce carbon cathodes and anodes, two crucial battery components. On the horizon, some developments are visible. Though you might not be able to use a hemp-based battery in an EV right now, that time may be coming sooner than you think. Battery issues with lithium-ion batteries. Due to their high energy density, lithium-ion batteries are commonly utilized for EVs. They are typically chosen above alternative solutions because they are efficient and work well in hot temperatures. They perform well. The use of fossil fuels can undoubtedly be reduced. However, there is a problem. Nickel, manganese, and cobalt are just a few of the rare and hazardous metals they frequently employ. Together with the growth of the EV market, the demand for these rare metals is increasing and the supply is running out. There are already ongoing initiatives to develop a recycling infrastructure for EV batteries, however there are some significant obstacles. First of all, there is a finite amount of room for recycling batteries. After the first generations of EV vehicles begin to reach the end of their useful lives, the current infrastructure will be overloaded. Smelting, another popular recycling technique, isn't very eco-friendly. Recycling doesn't actually address the use of rare or dangerous metals, though. Simply said, it lessens the unsustainable nature of something. Plants come to the rescue. Finding sustainable, recyclable, and renewable solutions that have little to no environmental impact is a crucial step toward a sustainable future. You guessed it, plants are where some of the most promising solutions for EV batteries are starting to emerge. Hemp batteries. Materials derived from hemp are used in a broader range of applications. Detergents, oils, and beverages are some of these. However, they are appearing in the production of products like furniture, interior vehicle composites, bioplastics, and the areas of energy and fuel. And now for the really exciting part. Springer's sustainable agriculture reviews come to the conclusion that hemp-based materials are indeed suitable substitutes for many fossil-based materials and applications. With their work on a lithium-ion battery substitute utilizing hemp and lithium sulfur battery technology, the Toyota research team is pushing this claim to new heights. In an interview, Koji Sato asserted that hemp batteries are preferable to lithium-ion batteries. Instead of using heavy metals like nickel and cobalt, our chemistry makes use of ingredients that are cheap, plentiful, and lightweight, such as carbonized hemp, boron, and sulfur. Hemp batteries will be excellent for electric aircraft and heavy-duty trucks. B4C hemp refers to boron carbide produced from hemp, and LIS stands for lithium sulfur. It's not a new concept to use hemp in batteries. Hemp has the potential to be used to create supercapacitors for batteries, according to research that started in this field in 2013. A revival in hemp agriculture is being brought about by the plant's resilient traits, high yield, and industrial uses. Hemp is grown in more than 30 nations, with China producing and exporting the most of it, according to Springer. Henry Ford's Hemp Car Anyone who is passionate about hemp's advantages will mention Henry Ford's hemp automobile, which he built in 1941. It featured an engine designed to run on hemp fuel, and the law says it was made entirely of plastics derived from hemp. Is there any truth to this rumor, given that there are no longer any vehicles like those on the road? When he imagined cars made completely of natural, environmentally friendly materials, was Henry Ford foreseeing the future? The myth of the hemp vehicle is still widely spread on pro-hemp websites, however most of them have few supporting historical facts. The real story behind Henry Ford's astonishing innovation starts to come to light with some careful investigation. There are currently several reliable publications on the topic, which are just now becoming known. What served as the hemp car's source of inspiration? Henry Ford initially had the idea for the cannabis automobile as a solution to the issues of the 1940s, the biggest one being World War II which resulted in a global lack of steel and finally led to rationing in America. All the steel that was available was used to build warships, tanks, and other military equipment. Steel from the auto sector was often taken away during this time to fund the war. Henry Ford created a car made completely of agricultural goods in an effort to get around this practical issue. Ford, who loved to farm, saw a lot of possibilities in experimenting with various plants. He created a few contemporary items as a result of this investigation. Due to the significantly lower weight, 
Ford also thought that plastic vehicles were far safer than metal vehicles. Years before we fully comprehended the risks involved with the fossil fuel sector, he expressed his opinions on the safety of hemp products. Ford viewed agriculture as much more than a means of producing food. He was of the opinion that a wide range of demands might be met in America by using goods like soy, corn, and hemp. The modern ethanol market was anticipated by Ford. Over 50 years ago, he foresaw the emergence of plant-based energy. What happened to the hemp car built by Henry Ford? The fact that the initial formulation is no longer in existence is one of the main reasons there is no further information on the hemp automobile today. Likewise the original video clip's first hemp automobile, which was seen driving about, was destroyed. People weren't back in love with the concept until recently. The steel and oil lobby is one argument as to why the hemp automobile was never successful. The scarcity of steel also ended when the war was over. Because their products were no longer needed during the war, the steel and oil industries fought to stay in business. They exerted significant lobbying pressure on the car industry to retain and utilize their products on the assembly line. Likewise it's believed that they contributed to the eventual prohibition of hemp by reducing its cultivation. There was little possibility for the hemp business. Why was Henry Ford's hemp car such a success? It wasn't just the novelty of the hemp automobile that made it appealing. The entire vehicle, aside from the metal frame, was constructed from a variety of agricultural goods. The initial formula is no longer available. What it might have contained is the subject of some conjecture. The majority of sources concur that hemp was a key ingredient in the outside panels of the hemp automobile. Soybean resin may have also been utilized, according to some experts. Henry Ford may have advocated for their use because he had large soybean fields of his own. The soybean automobile is how some publications refer to it. There are references to the plastic being made from wheat, sisal, flax, or ramey in other places, including the original video. Whatever the reason, it turned out that the finished panels were 10 times more dent resistant than conventional steel. The car was also far superior to traditional materials, even though environmental concerns weren't measured back then. It was also 25% lighter than comparable cars at the time because to the materials. In comparison to a steel-built automobile, the finished result was 1,000 pounds lighter. Lastly, Ford designed the car to run on fuel that was practically biofuel. Ford wanted his hemp-powered vehicle to use hemp fuel as opposed to diesel or gasoline. He intended to create an automobile from scratch. When will your automobile be powered by a plant? Everyone is curious about how much it costs and when it will be available, as with anything brand new and interesting. Hold on. Remember, Rome wasn't constructed overnight. Building an infrastructure to support widespread application is one of the biggest obstacles facing each new disruptive technology. It will take time to establish an efficient supply chain and manufacturing facilities for a battery built of various materials. The makers of reputable lithium-ion batteries will then present it with fierce rivalry. There is also the long-standing issue of fundamental economics. How much money will consumers be prepared to spend to power their cars? Strong draws include the extra advantages of longer range and faster charging, with sustainability being the icing on the cake. What clean energy, in actuality, is greener than a plant? Fast charging capabilities, low production costs in comparison to other batteries, and being environmentally friendly with 100% recyclable features are the aspects that are anticipated to boost the hemp battery market over the projected period, according to Sato. The demand for less expensive and more environmentally friendly carbon battery solutions will increase significantly as the EV market continues to expand. Plants seem to be in high demand in the EV battery market. Having said that, what is your thought about hemp batteries or hemp cars? Let us know your thoughts in the comment box below. And if you've watched up to this point, thank you so much. For more videos about EVs, Toyota, Tesla, Ford, and the most recent auto news, please consider subscribing to Tech Addicts.